I've been practicing medicine for over 25 years and I've seen it. The world is hurting, people are sick, and even with our greatest scientific discoveries and technological breakthroughs, trends in health are not getting better. We weren't designed for this. This world as we know it, it's not our home. But there is a remedy. Our Creator designed us to be resilient creatures, and He's given us clues in the scriptures that have dramatic implication for our lives today. Let's talk about biblical prescriptions. Let's take a serious look at living as God intended. Are you ready? Let's get well, and let's go home. And welcome to the Biblical Prescriptions for Life podcast presented by HeartWise Ministries. I'm your host, Nick Evanson, here with Dr. James L. Markham, author of the seven-week Bible studies, Biblical Prescriptions for Life. On today's podcast, we're going to talk about getting better rest, which has a big impact on your health. Dr. Markham, thank you for joining us today. And uh, how has your rest been lately? I know you were on yeah, call this yeah, last weekend. Yeah. I, well, a lot of people don't, you know, cardiologists do a lot of call. In fact, I was yeah. on call last night. Every Wednesday night, I'm on call. Mm-hmm. And last night wasn't a lot of calls, but you never quite sleep good when you know people can call you. Right. And I had to get up at, you know, I usually get up five, five thirty so I can see my patients and, you know, get here so I can do ministry in the afternoon, which I really enjoy doing. But, um, you know, rest is a big deal. I mean, you know, I feel sorry. We just finished before we did this um this podcast, we talked to a gentleman in Pakistan. That's right. Yeah, we're going to reach out to them with with Heartwise Ministries and sort of present the gospel to Pakistan. And he was staying up really late just to talk <laughs> to us for a few minutes. It's a bit of a time change, uh, time delay between our two countries. So yeah, and um, our biblical prescription today is from Matthew. Um, mm-hmm. Can you share that with us um, if you have that on it? That's Matthew. right. Matthew eleven verse twenty eight. Come unto me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. Yeah, I love that text, Nick. I mean, that's just a wonderful text. And that's, we're going to talk a little bit about rest. And, you know, we have our Bible study out that's out there, Biblical Prescriptions for Life. And that's sort of the template, okay, uh, sort of gives everyone a, sort of an overview of, of how Christ wants to improve our health. And as our health improves, our relationship with Christ improves and vice mm-hmm. versa. Mm-hmm. And how Christ is the source of power. And that's one thing that we really want to do. We want to uplift Christ. You know, um, you think about John the Baptist and John came to present Christ, you know, to bridge the Old and New Testament, the Old Covenant, the New Covenant. He was the one that says, you know, I want to, to, to lift Christ up and be less. You know, I'm the mm-hmm. best man. You know, I'm not the bridegroom. Right. And in, in, that, in that story, it makes me realize that's what every ministry is about is uplifting Christ. Mm -hmm. And however a ministry does that, whether it be health or whether it be other issues, we wanna always uplift Christ because when we do that, when he's part of our lives, then then the power of change comes in. But one of the things that we talk about in our seven week study that we could have done another study about and we might someday is the importance of rest. Come unto me, worship, and I will give you rest. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of people just associate that with physical rest you know, at night. Right. Um, Well, that is important rest. Don't get me wrong. But there's, and we're going to talk about that primarily today, you Mm -hmm. know, because people can't sleep at night. We're not resting well. That's what we want to focus on in this podcast. But a lot of people don't realize there's mental rest. Mm -hmm. You know, you you answer a bunch of questions in the day. You're busy on the cell phone or whatever. There's the relationship rest. You know, sometimes people just sort of wear you out, don't they? Yeah. You know, <laughs> sometimes you need to get away from to too much too much drama going on. Yeah, everybody needs a little bit of alone time now. And then. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's now there's a new type of rest that I think people are going to have to incorporate. That's media rest. Yeah, away from the electronics yes, and the but, messages in the media. Yes. And then of course the spiritual rest, which just text talks about coming to me, worship me, be with mm-hmm. me. So this text really focuses on this the this worshipful rest, but we want to focus today on the physical rest. And nowadays, more than ever, we're not getting enough rest. Now, rest is so important because our world has so many stressors in life. And anything that goes against our natural design can be a stress. So let me quiz you a little bit, Nick. Yeah. Do you think um, pain is a stressor? Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Do you think an awesome sight is a stressor? 
Good. Got that one right. Not for most people. Okay. Do you think not drinking enough water is a stressor? Yeah, you bet. Okay. Yeah. Do you think that exercise is an appropriate exercise is a stressor? Uh, you use that word appropriate. I mean, exercise definitely stresses your body. Right. Uh, and, and that's good to a certain point, I guess. So mm -hmm. if you do it appropriately, I think it has a net gain rather than a net okay. negative effect. Well, anyway, any input that we put in our body can either help us or hurt us. If mm -hmm. it's hurting us, it goes against our natural design. It's stressing us. Right. A lot of people focus on the food stress, but I'm trying to focus on everything, the mental stress. Being separated from God, I think, is a stressor. Certainly, yeah. Because we were made to be with our creator. However, our hardwire is programmed bad. We have genetic errors that we're never going to get rid of. Unfortunately, you're wired to think a certain way. Mm -hmm. And no matter what you want to do, Nick, you have the, the Evanson wiring that's been passed on right. from generation to generation. And the wiring that animals have is to stay alive. Mm -hmm. and we'll do anything to stay alive. And that's a selfish, selfish, turned on selfish, which is the opposite of love. Right. So we're yeah. all selfish. We have that stress of staying alive. That's hardwired into us. Mm -hmm. So we have that stress going on, the mental stress, the, the media stress. Some people are stressed out because they want to see who Facebooked them or Instagram them or emailed them. Or right. they hear yeah. their phone go off and they have to get at it and see who was on it. Mm -hmm. Or they, they smell something that's bad or, you know, the stress is everywhere. Well, stress actually causes our DNA to age. Okay, and an agent has mutations. Now we have mechanisms that can improve it. Um, there's certain enzymes that, that go up and down that help improve our DNA, but enough stress damages our DNA. Our DNA's damaged, parts get older, parts get older, they malfunction, then we need modern medicine. Right. Some people it's the eyes, some people it's the ears, some people it's the legs, some people it's the heart. When something malfunctions, it stresses out and it needs some modern medicine to help get them over the hump, but doesn't get at the cause. Some of the ways we can lower that stress in life is to get adequate rest. And we're gonna talk about physical rest on this, this podcast today, but there's many other types of rest as we talked about. If you broke your arm, you wouldn't keep throwing fastballs. That's right. You got to rest it. That's right. Yeah. If you, let's say you ride your bike down the hill and the next day your muscles are, are like screaming. Okay. Mm -hmm. they, they, would you get on the bike and ride some more? Very gently, if at all. That's right. Because <laughs> your, your body's yeah. under stress. It needs to rest. Mm -hmm. um, if you just feel overwhelmed with work, you know, that's why we have vacations, mm -hmm. you know. God also built in a rest in our body. You know, he, six days gave us a day to rest, mm -hmm. mental rest, physical right. rest. And I think that day of rest incorporates all the different subsets of rest mm -hmm. that we do in a body, the physical, the mental, the social. We have that type of rest if we need to do that. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that rest does is it helps reset our, our rhythms, our circadian rhythms. Um, and so when we violate those, we're under a constant state of stress. We never rest. Right. You know, we talked about the broken arm, but when your brain doesn't get the rest at night it needs, when your bowel doesn't get the rest it needs, when your muscles don't get the rest mm -hmm. it needs, when the eyes and the ears don't get the rest, mm -hmm. that's another chronic stressor. That's right. And the chronic stress causes the parts to wear out quicker. Mm -hmm. So Edison, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Thomas Edison. Remember sure, him? Sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was credited, I don't know if he did it or Westinghouse, but one of those guys really developed the light bulbs, mm -hmm. lights at night. Mm -hmm. And ever since lights at night happened, our rest patterns really got messed up. Yeah. Lights at night caused the brain to stay stimulated. And then we had TV and radio and more and more. So we have all this chronic stimulation that goes on, makes chemicals like epinephrine, inflammatory chemicals that turn down some of our circadian rhythm hormones that keep us resting well. Mm -hmm. So just that in itself causes us not to rest well. Well, some people also have health problems that cause them not to rest well. Some of the big ones out there, and if you're not resting well, you might wanna see if you have sleep apnea. Right. That's where people gain extra weight or they can't sleep well because of stimulations where they don't rest well. So their oxygen level goes down. The stress chemistry goes up. So they wake up, grab some air, and then they never rest. So effectively, during their sleep, they're just not getting enough oxygen in That's their body. correct. And that causes them to wake up. And an alarm goes off because you make adrenaline so you don't rest well. Okay. Because the parts yeah. need oxygen. That's right. Yeah. No oxygen, alarms go off. 
better bad sleep than oxygen deprivation. Right, right. and there's yeah. other things like diabetes, for instance. Diabetes, the blood sugar gets too high. The blood sugar gets too high, you have to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So you get up a lot at night. Mm -hmm. That's not good. That's a medical problem that causes you not to rest well. Right. Some men have big prostates and they drink water at night and mm -hmm. they can't rest well because they have to go to, to urinate quite a bit. Right. Yeah. Um, some medicines can keep us up at night. Then there's some things besides the light day cycle and the stimulants from TV and media that we do that keep us up at night. Um, some of the, the more common things I think is the stimulants we put in our body. Mm -hmm. Um, some people take a lot of the energy drinks and amphetamines are now big right, and yeah. all these chemicals that keep us on the go. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people think alcohol is a good thing, but alcohol disrupts the brain, which disrupts the sleep patterns as well. Right. Yeah. So there's a host of things out there. That, that we need to work on for rest. In our home, we have two little things called Hayden and Corbin. They affect our rest sometimes, our little boys. They uh, wake up during the night sometimes, but they'll grow out of that. Hopefully they'll grow out of that. <laughs> but you know, you, know, you know, there's not a lot you can do about that. Right, you know, you, yeah. that, you know, your family, you have to, you can't just, you know. Gotta take care of the kids. You gotta take care of the kids, but luckily, but that does affect your rest. Mm -hmm. And when your rest is affected, it affects the whole body. That's right, yeah. So, so I, I want everyone to understand that in this text, come unto me and I will give you rest, that it's, there's different types of rest. Today we want to focus on um, some practical things that we can do to get our physical rest. Yeah. So now that we describe the dangers of it, um, some of the medical conditions, so let's give people one or two things that they can do to rest physically better every day. So you ready for that list? Yeah, let's hear it. Okay. One, and I give these in the office all the time as prescriptions. Now, I don't write mm -hmm. them on a self a prescription pad, but I probably could. Mm -hmm. But one thing that you can do is take a day off every week, a Sabbath rest downtime. Mm -hmm. And don't feel guilty about it. You know, yeah. don't feel like you have to do anything, you have to plan anything. Just have downtime to physically rest. Mm -hmm. If you need to take a nap, take a nap. Um, if you need to go to bed earlier that weekend, do that. If you need to get away and have some social rest, do that. If you need to have some mental rest, do that. And of course, you want to have some spiritual rest as well, where you can come to God. So give yourself a day off every week where you can worship. Mm -hmm. Do that. Yeah. Once you do that, your life will be blessed. That is a biblical prescription because right. God talked about the importance of resting. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, our 24-7 news cycle world, we don't do that. Right. You know, yeah. we've got to go. we got to be busy. If you're not busy, there's something wrong with you. And we mm -hmm. feel guilty. We feel guilty for, well, I'm going to take a nap or I'm going to do this and I'm just going to take it easy. I'm not going to clean the house. I'm not going to do this. Well, we feel guilty about that. Well, it's part of being balanced. Right. It's having physical rest. So that's one thing everybody can do. At least work towards that goal. Number two, try to turn off media and lights at night. That's right. Don't go to bed with the iPad or the phone, huh? Put yeah. it away an hour yeah. before bedtime. There's a lot of studies that show just the light that comes in keeps our brains revved up. Mm -hmm. Of course, when our brain's thinking about things like the news and if you watch something on TV and your mind's playing that over and over, yeah, um, those type of things can disrupt your sleep pattern. So try to limit those if you can. I mean, just experiment. Maybe you could have a media-free night and see how you do. Yeah. You know, my iPhone has a night shift mode and it will change the colors on the screen from a bluer light to yeah. a more orange light to help. But I don't think that really helps me because I'm still processing and thinking about whatever I'm reading or watching on my, on my phone or iPad. Right. Your brain keeps playing it over. So it, n nice try, Apple. And Google has similar things. Nice, nice attempt to help us, mm -hmm. you know, adapt better to nighttime mode. But I think it still causes problems for me. It does. And everyone has different problems depending on their hardwiring genetics they brought to the table. Some people have no problem resting. They can sleep through the world. Right. You know, yeah. um, bears are like that in the wintertime. You know, they can that's sleep right. through any, mm -hmm. but some people have these, these hard wiring that's not as good as others and they don't get rest. So they have to really focus on it. Um, so we talked about turning off lights, which sort of keeps things revved up and stimuli. We've talked a little about a day of rest. The third thing is avoid chemical stimulation. Okay. okay, we're talking this about caffeine and caffeine alcohol. And, and, and also 
drugs, weight loss drugs, um, and medicines for uh, and things like attention deficit, um, all the medicines that that's a lot of medicines that people take for their brain mm -hmm. can affect their sleep cycles. Now, are we talking about not taking them at all, or are we talking about not just taking them in the last half of the day? Well, if if a person can get off of the medicines that alter their brain, that's always going to be the best to keep the brain more on its natural function. Right. Yeah. And if you're on a sleeping pill, a lot of people take sleeping pills now. Remember, that might help for a short period of time, but it doesn't fix things over the long haul. Mm -hmm. And there's been studies on all the sleep aids and it shows that it actually causes cognitive. We don't think well when we do it. Mm -hmm. So it might get you over the short term, but it's something that you don't want long term. You want to try to fix the problem if you can. Now, there's a few number of people that, you know, they can't fix the problem and it's probably safer for them to take a little bit of sleeping aid than not take any at all if it's if it's severe. Mm -hmm. OK, and we got some severe sleep problems out there. Now, from time to time, we get questions about melatonin. Does that fall into the category of sleep aids that you're talking about? Well, or is that melatonin a is a natural substance that your body makes. And some people are a little low on that. So some people that that's a that's a natural sleep aid that might help some people. Mm -hmm. But I found, Nick, that that learning how to cut stimulation and lights out and this stuff and the day of rest works far better because that's right. more of a natural solution to that. But a lot of people don't realize that it might be that that cup of coffee they drink at six o'clock that's keeping them up sure, yeah. or that might be a medicine that they're doing that's keeping them up mm -hmm. you know some type of stimulant in their life is disrupting their sleep pattern so try yeah. to cut that out if you can okay so that's three things that will help um, people rest better at night and i want to leave at least with four now these are these are things that people can do we've talked about our text come into me and i will give you rest um, we've talked about three different things that will help you. Now I'm going to talk about probably the most important thing. And that's in this text, it says, come into me and I will give you rest. So spend time in the evening as well as the morning in worship. Spend some time in Bible study, in prayer, thanking God for the day, thanking him for the things that he's done, asking him to teach you how to have physical rest too. Um, praying and reading the Bible at night, you know, doing those type of things, focusing on more worship and letting God give you the power to rest better and to sleep better and to make all the changes and to learn about rest and what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Right. So I know a lot of people have problems with insomnia now, with resting physically. Well, I'm hoping today in this podcast, we've given you something to think about that might help you at least do a little bit better. That last one, though, is what works for me the best, is coming to me and worship me in the evening. Mm -hmm. Come back to me from the day time, th being thankful, being praised, put some positive thought in asking God, God, help me to rest tonight. Put away all of the thoughts and the busyness. Help me to turn off the lights. Help me to learn things that might be affecting my rest. Help me to do these things um, so I can rest better, so I can serve better and feel better. Remember, mm, right. better worship, better body. Better worship, Power to rest, power to learn about rest, to make the, the changes that we need to do to feel better, to turn off some of these chronic stressors, this chronic disease. So that's what I wanted to leave people today on our podcast. Yeah, I got one question for you here yeah. in closing. Uh, so we're talking about better rest, better nutrition, better hydration, all these things. You are correlating them with better worship. I think what we're saying is is they increase our capacity for a strong relationship with Christ. Is that correct? Well, whenever we are healthier, anyway, it makes our brain healthier. We don't, we're not living in a stress environment. Stress environment, it's harder to worship than a non-stress environment. Mm. That's why when you have a day of rest, it's easier to worship under that situation than when you're under stress of the job and making decisions all day long. Right, yeah. So, so, so the better you're, if, you, if you're sick all the time and have the stress of illness and pain, that downshifts the brain so the higher part of the brain isn't quite as functional. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it doesn't work as well. So when I say the better physical, the better worship, it's because our brain works better. It can handle worship better. It's not as distracted by other things. It can focus at a higher level. Okay, so these things are helping us 
work in the right part of the brain where the yes. worship occurs. Yes, Got and, it. and it's, yeah. it's helping that brain be more active and not focusing the brain resources and just staying alive. The selfish yeah. part of the brains that's that right. we've talked about before, the part that we're hardwired to do, to mm -hmm. stay alive. Mm -hmm. So we wanna focus on you know heavenly things, spiritual things, so as our bodies get better, it increases our capacity to worship. And as we worship, it increases our capacity to do things that will change our physical body. Body. So that's, that's what we right. mean when we say that. Excellent. Good yeah. explanation. Good. Um, you know, we're going to have some free resources coming out soon uh, on oh, yeah. some of these topics, such as rest and hydration, nutrition. Um, those will be coming out soon. So stay tuned in on the podcast and we will get you uh, the web links to where you can find free resources to help you start sleeping better. Uh, we have some excerpts from the Biblical Prescriptions for Life uh, Bible study guide, uh -huh. and uh, it'll give you a taste for, for what's in the, the full seven week Bible study and uh, give you some practical things that you can apply in your life. So stay tuned. We're going to give you those on future podcasts. And uh, Dr. Markham, Thank you so much for all your tips. Yeah. I'm going to employ those because sometimes I have a hard time getting my mind to shut down at night and uh, I, I just think about things yeah. when I just need to be resting. So well, I'm going to employ those well, tactics. There's many more and I want to invite everyone that's listening or watching to use this ministry as a tool in your life to uplift Christ. Share it mm -hmm. with your friends and neighbors. Have them sign up to our, our, our lists. Um, go to our website, you know, review a restaurant, you know, pray for somebody. We have a prayer page there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, use this resource to reach out to those that need to hear about how what a great God we have. Christ who comes, who wants to heal, who wants to get better. Use this to, to spread the gospel. That's and right. we can get this to lots of people because it's not about an individual. It's about uplifting Christ. That's right. And you can find those resources that Dr. Markham just mentioned at heartwiseministries.org. And if you have a comment about the podcast or if you have a question for the podcast on any health topic, uh, send that to us uh, through the website at biblicalprescriptions.com forward slash podcast. And uh, you'll find a form there at the bottom where you can submit your question. And we want to hear any comments you may have, any questions. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for joining us today, and uh, we hope you rest better, and we look forward to joining you again soon to talk more about getting well and going home.